Hello YouTube, it is Everything you Pan here, and in this video we are doing a video tutorial on how to install Windows NT 3.1 in PCM or 86 box. Uh, it's been a while since I made a NT 3.1 video. Um, I did a tutorial um, a while back, a uh, long time ago actually, in regards of a VirtualBox tutorial for this operating system, so figured uh, this one would be appropriate for the uh, PCM86 box because the sound should actually work. Um, I mean, I think you can get it to work in VirtualBox. It just doesn't really come out very well. So that probably work better in a PCM or 86 box uh, since it's got, you know, the older cards, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, without further ado, we'll go ahead and just get right into the uh, video here. Um, so the links in the description here, of course, uh, PCM uh, to download here. And then also 86 box will be available, whichever one you'd like to use. Um, for this video, I will be using 86 box. Uh, the two are very similar. Um, there really isn't much of it. You know, there are differences between the two. It's kind of more of a personal preference type of thing. Um, but the setup uh, process of actually like creating the machine and uh, doing the install is similar between the two. So um, again, I'll be using 86 box in this, but you can use either one. Um, and I'll have links for both. Um, also have the... Uh, floppies for the uh, Windows NT 3.1 um, in the description. Um, there will also be a link to WinRAR since it does come in a 7-zip file um, or a .7z file, uh, so you'll need to extract those from there um, in order to use them in the uh, virtual machine. Um, so you'll need something like WinRAR or 7-zip um, here, and I can include, uh, like I said, I'll include a link for WinRAR in the description since that's the one I usually use. Um, but that should be all you need for those uh, files and things you need there for the tutorial. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll make sure to go ahead and, uh, for me, I have 86 box manager on here, so I'll make sure to open that up. And what we're gonna do is add a machine. I'm gonna go ahead and call it Windows NT 3.1. We're gonna configure this machine now, so we'll check the box there and hit add. And it's gonna go ahead and create the machine, so just hit okay, and then the uh, Configuration should pop up here for the machine. So we're in the machine settings now. Um, I'm gonna use the same machine that I've used for any of my previous uh, PCM86 box tutorials. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a socket seven dual voltage. The machine is gonna be the um, Epox uh, P55VA. And then for CPU type, it's gonna be the Intel Pentium MMX 233 speed, and then memory will go as high as we can with 128 megabytes of memory. Uh, for the display, um, the one that I usually set this on is, uh, if we scroll down here, it is a uh, ATI uh, 64GX here. There's the PCI version here. There's actually another version up top right here, uh, the ISA 16 version. Um, I don't know if there's really any particular like if it matters in between the two i usually just pick the pci one if it doesn't work you know you can certainly try uh the other one up here um make sure voodoo graphics is just... and then for input devices i just do the standard ps2 mouse really i think any of these should work and then for sound uh for the sound card this would be important here because this is uh going to be how it works um in here we're going to want to do sound blaster v1.5 and then uh, we'll go to network here. I mean, you don't have to have a network. Um, it's not like you're going to have access anyways. So you really can leave this off if you want. Um, but you can throw in a network adapter if you wish. Nothing to change here on ports uh, for storage controller. Um, I just do IDE controller. And then for hard disks, we're going to go ahead and get in here to create a hard disk. I'm going to create the file name as Windows NT 3.1. Um, for the size, I'm just going to make it a gig and then make sure it's IDE and 00 for the channel. Everything should remain the same, really. Um, and then it'll hit OK. It will create your disk image here. So hit OK once that's done, and that should create it in here. And then for the floppy and CD-ROM drives here, of course, you don't need two of them. You can disable that one if you wish. Um, you're not going to need the CD-ROM here. You can enable it if you wish. For that, I just usually do ATAPI and 24x speed. Um, and then for the type of floppy, I just do 3.5-inch, uh, 1.44 megabyte uh, floppy here. 
And then we don't need to change anything on other removable devices or peripherals. So we can just hit OK to confirm those changes and it will confirm those in the machine. And then what we're going to want to do is go ahead and hit start uh, to start the machine here. And if you want to make this full screen here, um, you can do action or uh, I'm sorry, it's view and then resizable window and you can drag it up and make it full size. Um, and then here um, it will load up the BIOS for the first time. And so this will give us the opportunity to insert that floppy. Uh, there's going to be 22 floppies that this includes. So there's going to be a lot of, you know, clicking out and inserting a new floppy. So just be aware of that uh, ahead of time here. So want to go into media and then go to floppy. And we're going to choose an existing image. And you're going to want to locate where the uh, images are for the... Uh, floppies for NT 3.1. So I'm just going to go into the folders here and you'll see there's disk one all the way to disk 22. So of course we'll just want to insert disk one and then we can click into the machine and hit F1 to continue and it will continue the boot process and it should boot automatically to your floppy here. So it'll say setup is inspecting your computer's hardware configuration. It'll load the setup. And we'll get into the uh, blue screen part of the setup. That's kind of a two-parter here. It's got the blue screen, and then eventually it'll come up with a uh, graphical part of the setup here. So it'll be coming up with the welcome to setup screen here. So what we'll want to do is just hit enter to continue. And we're going to do the express setup here um, on this. So just hit enter. And then it's going to do some scanning here. And once it's done, it should go on to the next portion of the setup here. So just kind of let it scan through. It's going to work slower, of course, you know, since we're on PCM in 86 uh, box, you know, one of those two versus uh, something like VirtualBox or VMware. So um, this is going to go, you know, longer than how it would in uh, VirtualBox, for example. Uh, that one, you know, is relatively quick other than for, you know, having to obviously, you know, insert each of the floppies. But um, it'll come up with a message saying that the... Uh, that it's determined that the computer startup hard disk contains a non-standard operating system or it's never been used. So just hit C to continue the setup. And then it's going to have you pick your uh, drive here that you want to install it on. And of course, you should have the one unpartitioned disk space that you created. Um, and mine was one gig. So we're going to hit enter to install it on there. And then I'm actually going to use this uh, on the NTFS file system. So we're going to go up to format to NTFS and hit enter. And it will give you a warning that it's going to erase anything that's on the disk. Uh, just hit F to format it, and it will go ahead and format the drive here. So uh, this will take a little bit here, of course, since it's you know emulating on the older hardware. So it'll take a bit to go ahead and format the drive. So I'm going to let that go ahead and format here real quick. And I'll be back with you guys once it's done formatting. Okay, so it's finishing up with the formatting here. So uh, once that's done, um, it'll ask to you know choose the uh, path location here where you want the files to be installed. So by default, it's uh, in the WinNT folder. So just hit uh, Enter to continue on that here. And it's going to go ahead and copy files here. And then I think we're going to be getting to a part here where it's going to have us, uh, yep, right here where we're going to insert the next disk. So it's going to be a process of just continuing to do this um when it tells you to insert the next disk um it'll tell you of course which number to enter in here so um this part may take a bit there because it's going to have to copy all those files over and you're going to have to you know insert uh you know some of those disks um into the into the drive uh, to be able to get them all to copy over that kind of thing so um so follow the on screen there when you're in the copying file stage. Um, when it tells you to insert, you know, a specific disk number, you just need to go up to the media tab here um, and then go into floppy and hit existing image. And then you just want to find the number that it's asking for and just open it and then it will insert. And then you just hit enter um, to continue the setup. So I'm going to go through that here so I don't take any of your time up here from watching all that. Uh, but that's just how that's going to work here through the uh, copying files stage. So, um, again, just when it comes up with, uh, you know, a prompt to insert another disk um, or, you know, to insert a specific disk number, 
um, make sure you do that um, throughout the setup here. So I'm going to get this stage here complete, and then I'll come back to you guys here once it's uh, completed through the copying file stage. So here's an example. You'll see that it went through a little bit, and now it needs number three. So if you go to existing image, uh, insert number three, and hit enter, it's going to do the same thing, and it'll just have to keep doing that until it reaches like a restart stage, which I think comes up after this copying files. So um, I'll be back with you guys once this is all completed and uh, we hit that restart point after the copying file stage. Okay, so we finally reached the stage where it says that it successfully configured your computer for Windows NT, and so the computer needs to be restarted to continue the setup. So um, by this point, we are on disk number nine is where we should be, um, and we're going to need to eject that now um, on the restart. So go ahead and do uh, the eject disk nine here, and then um, you can go ahead and do either a hard reset, or if you do uh, control Alt delete here, it should restart the computer. Uh, or the machine here is what it would be actually. Um, so it's going to restart the machine and then it's going to go ahead and boot us up into the graphical part of the setup, I believe. So you can see it says version 3.1 up there. And here we are. Um, so on this, we can go ahead and uh, enter a name and company. Um, the name is only required. So um, go ahead and enter that in and then hit continue. Hit continue again, and then this is where the computer name is going to come up. So I'm just going to call it NT 3.1. You can call it whatever you want, and then hit continue. Go ahead and hit continue once more to verify uh, the name correct here. And then this is where the language uh, comes up here. So pick your specified language that you need. I think uh, this is only the, it uh, looks like you got a few different languages here. So make sure you have your language correct. Hit continue. And then it's going to ask to set up a printer. Um, for this, we can just hit cancel and then it's gonna come up on the network setup here. So just go ahead and hit continue on this, uh, continue again, and then hit no network, and then hit okay, because uh, obviously network services aren't gonna work on here. So it's gonna have us go ahead and insert disk number nine again. Um, so we'll go back into the floppy, do existing image and find disk nine. Um, and this is where it has left off um, with the copying of files. So it looks like it's gonna do the same thing here. It's gonna copy some more files. Um, so it's gonna be kind of a similar process there where it's gonna copy some files and then it will beep at you to insert another disk. Um, it'll continue to go in order there. So uh, once it gets a little bit through here, it should pop up and say to insert disk number 10. Um, so I'll do one of these as an example and then um, I'll pause through and go through this part um, without taking up your guys' time again. Um, and then we'll get to the end of this setup portion and um, get to another restart point. So here you can see it says, please insert the disk labeled Windows NT setup disk number 10. So we're just going to media, the floppy drive, existing image, and then disk number 10 and hit OK. And just continue through that until it reaches the end of it here um, and you know should prompt to reboot, I believe. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get through this here. Um, as you can see, it's going to continue to go through, but I'll get through this and I'll be back with you guys once it gets towards the end or gets to a restart point here. Okay, so here we are at the end of that uh, setup here on uh, the last disk, which is 22. It will go through the final stage and then um, it will go through some final steps here on this uh, setup screen. And then uh, eventually we should get to the point here where I believe it's going to have us reboot again um, after these stages here, which is going to be the account setup. So this is for the administrator account for the server. Um, you can put a password here if you wish, or if you just hit continue and OK, um, you can leave it blank. And then this is for your local account. Um, so you want to enter in a user uh, username here and you can leave the password blank or enter one. If you leave it blank, just hit continue and OK. And then now it's going to have you pick your date and time. Um, if you go ahead and you know look through your uh, time zones here, I mean, it should have all of it here. You can even have it adjust for daylight savings and hit OK. Um, and it's going to ask to do the emergency repair disk. So if we go ahead um, and hit OK, we're not going to actually have to do this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and actually eject that disk. Um, so it doesn't do anything to it here. I would make sure to go ahead and uh, eject that once you're done. Um, 
go ahead and hit uh, cancel on this and hit OK. And then now it should give you the uh, installation uh, prompt here that says it was uh, installed. Uh, so it's going to have you remove any disks. Uh, it should have already been removed prior to the emergency disk uh, spot there. Um, go ahead and hit restart computer. And it's going to go ahead and restart the machine. And then what it's going to do is it's going to actually convert, since I picked NTFS for the file system, it's actually going to go ahead and convert that uh, file system over from uh, FAT to NTFS. Um, so it'll have converting file system here. This can take a little bit of time here. Um, it is only a gig of space, so it may not take super long, but then it eventually should automatically reboot again. And it will go ahead and load up. And you'll see now that the file system is NTFS. And it will boot up into uh, Windows NT 3.1 here. So um, at the welcome screen, we'll go ahead and we'll need to go ahead and insert a control alt delete here. So go to action and control alt delete. Um, and then the password, I didn't have one here, but if you did enter it in, go ahead and hit okay. And here we are uh, to log into the operating system here. Um, now to get sound working as for, uh, 256 color graphics, I'm not sure on the exact process on how to do that. Sometimes it can do it automatically here, but if we go to control panel and we go to, uh, drivers and go to sound and hit add, and we go to creative labs, sound blaster one dot X and hit okay. And then that's going to have us enter in uh, disc number 22 again. So go ahead and make sure that's inserted and hit OK. And then it's going to have us insert disk number 21 for a file that it needs off of that. So go ahead and insert disk number 21 here and hit OK. And it's going to ask for the port and the interrupt here. So um, 220 and 7 is going to be your uh, numbers you want there. You'll hit OK. So it should have those by default. So just hit OK on that. And then we're going to need to make sure that disk 22 is back inserted and hit OK. And it's going to say that the driver has been added. So now we can go ahead and remove that uh, floppy out of the drive and hit restart now. And it's going to go ahead and restart the machine here. And then hopefully once this all boots up, the sound should be working. We'll go ahead and let it boot up here, and then we'll see if it plays the startup sound. Um, we'll need to log in to do that here. So again, go up to Action and Control-Alt-Delete. If you have a password, enter it in, and then when we hit OK, I'm hoping here, fingers crossed, that we should have the startup sound. And there we go. So we got sound working on here. Um, so that is uh, certainly a plus that you can have that in the uh, system here again. I'm not sure if there's a way to exactly get 256 graphics here. Um, you know, you may be able to look through the drivers here and see if there's a way to, um, you know, add a video driver here um, on that. So, you know, there's the different options here you can look through. These are all like audio drivers here. But, um, yeah, uh, that's certainly a plus, though, that we can at least get sound on here. That's certainly good to see. Um that that is a thing and uh that's pretty much all there is to it with the install so um so that will complete the tutorial here on how to install windows nt 3.1 in pcm or 86 box uh thank you guys so much for watching this video here uh if you guys did enjoy uh this video or found it helpful at all to you uh certainly can leave a like down below i would certainly appreciate that um if you have any uh, ideas for any future videos or anything you'd like to leave in the comments, you can drop a comment down below as well. Um, and if you are here and not yet subscribed to the channel and would like to keep up to date on my uploads, you can certainly go ahead and uh, hit the subscribe button down below and hit the bell to be notified whenever I upload a video. Um, but that concludes this video tutorial on how to install Windows NT 3.1 in PCM or 86 box. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.